Good morning, Destiny Church. So sorry that I'm not actually with you in person this week. We're away on holiday down in Kent, Kath and I. And um, it's, we're really excited about this, uh, this time to be away, but we're really missing you. And uh, hopefully, if there's internet uh, where we're going, we will be joining you online. So you'll know if you're online, because you'll be able to kind of connect into the online. Even while you're in here, you'll be able to say, oh, yes, I'm at DC, but you could just join online. You'll be able to say, is Pastor Jonathan with us or not? There you go. You could find out. Uh, if not, you'll have to find out where we've, uh, we've gone uh, to, to worship. And, um, but it's going to be good. So it's one of those weeks where it's video, uh, video sermon. And uh, so, but uh, I hope that just the same, you will hear what God wants to say to you, because uh, God knows that you would be here today, that you would be uh, joining with us online today, and it's so uh, precious to us, all that we're doing. Well, we're in a series um, entitled Time to Get in Shape, and uh, we have looked at getting your cutting edge back, you know, getting the zeal and the the zest back into your life. We've uh, last week uh, we talked about some of the spiritual exercises that are necessary for spiritual fitness, and this week we are going to particularly look at having a healthy mind. Uh, it's time to change your mind. <coughs> Excuse me. And so um, <clears throat> this week I want. Uh, to look at about preparing our minds, getting our minds healthy, and that it needs to be intentional, that it's not just something that is haphazard in us. You see, whether you know it or not, we are in an invisible war. And there is a battle for our minds for each of us every single day. The moment you get up, there's a battle for your mind, whether it's on the television or radio, or whether it's in your thought life, or whether it's things that you read or where people that you meet, whatever, there's a constant battle for your mind and what your mind is going to be thinking about, the state of your mind. And, uh, and so it's important that, to realize that whatever gets your mind gets you. Because if it's got your attention, it's got the whole of you. So whatever that is, uh, it's important for us to be very conscientious and intentional about the things that are going into our mind, the things that are both going in and the things that we decide to look at, listen to and, uh, and talk about uh, is so important for us. And one of the things that uh, when I was in my motorbike days, the, one of the crucial pieces of equipment was to have a helmet for your head. And uh, you didn't, it wasn't law uh, to have uh, uh, pads on your elbows or on your knees or to wear anything particular, but it's law to wear a helmet. Why? Because your head is the most important part. Lose your head and you've lost your life. So it's important that we understand what's going on in our head and it's important that we protect our head. <coughs> so it's important to protect our head, it's important to use our mind and uh, to expand our mind and to develop our mind. And Romans 7 talks about uh, that so often there are things that we want to do, but we don't do. We want to do them, but we end up not being able to do them. There's things that we don't want to do, and we end up doing them. Why? Because of this constant battle in our mind. And 2 Corinthians chapter 10, and verse 3 says this, Though we live in the world, we do not wage war as the world does. The weapons we fight with are not the weapons of the world. On the contrary, they have divine power to demolish strongholds. There's a battle going in our mind and there are strongholds that so often can get into our minds. Circle strongholds if, you've, uh, if you're taking notes uh, because it's important to us. We demolish arguments, it says, and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. These are cognitive words. Argument, pretension, Knowledge. This is a mind battle. This is a, 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 a warfare in the mind. This is where it, the battle is won or lost. So we take captive every thought and make it 
obedient to Christ, yes? So what is a stronghold? A stronghold is a false idea that dominates your life. A false idea that dominates your life. That's a stronghold. It could be anything, but if it's dominating your life, if it's a false idea, then it's a stronghold in your eye. It could be a mental frame of reference. It could be a worldview. It could be an idea of something that's false, but it's ingrained into your, into your life. For example, worry can be a stronghold. Fear can be a stronghold. Guilt and resentment, bitterness can be strongholds. Jealousy, envy, even impatience can be a stronghold in our, in our lives. And so some of these things, if they're a stronghold in our life, they need to be torn down. They need to be broken. They need to be uh, dealt with and changed in our life. And God wants us to, to deal with these strongholds. He wants us to understand our minds. He wants us to really grasp a hold of these things so that we end up becoming what God wants us to become. So we've got to take captive every thought. What does it mean, we take captive every thought? It, well, literally means to capture something. It, you know, it's like taking a hill in a battle. If you fight for the battle for this hill and you take that thing, it's yours. It belongs to you. So you've, got to, you've conquered it. Um, you've forced if you force somebody into submission, if you're, say, in a wrestling bout, you have conquered it, you've taken it captive, and uh, you've brought it under your control. And so that's what we've got to do with our thoughts. We have got to bring our thoughts under control. <coughs> now, I don't know about you, but I find that my mind is very disobedient. It does its own thing, it wanders off on its own way, and it kind of gets into a whole mind of its own, as it were, and uh, it goes off in all sorts of directions, and yours probably does the same as well. Why? Because we don't control our thoughts 100% of the time. We can't control our thoughts all of the time. And so we end up with... Uh, our mind going off in different directions. Our mind, as it were, rebels against us and does all sorts of things, starts to wander off. So, for example, when you come to pray, you start off to pray and then the next minute you're thinking about a bacon butty. Or, you, you know, you start reading your Bible and then your phone goes or something and you're off onto something else. I mean, I pick my phone up to maybe to look at something and I get distracted by other things, I end up putting my phone back down and then thinking, why did I pick my phone up in the first place? I pick it up again, get distracted again, and it takes me sometimes numerous times to get to the actual reason I went to my phone in the, per, in the first place. And so it's important for us to be able to understand this, that our thoughts need to be brought under our control so that we do the things that we want to do, the things that we need to do, and to do things that are best for us. We want to be able to control our minds so that we're not worrying about things, we're not bitter about things, we're not envious about things, we're not feeling guilty or bitter about, uh, about things. So to have a spiritually healthy uh, um, uh, life in Christ, we need to be healthy mentally, we need to think different. <clears throat> and so what, today I'm going to talk about two negatives and then three positive things that we need to do to have healthy minds. And so the first one is test every thought. Test every thought. In other words, don't believe everything that you think. This is so important. You see, if you think a certain way, you're going to act that way. So if you think that you're useless, you're going to act as if you're useless. If you think you're no good at something, you will act as if you're no good. If you think you're disliked, you're going to act as if you're disliked. If you think you're loved, you're going to act in a way that you're loved. And so it's important for us to realize that just because we think something doesn't mean that it's true. It doesn't mean that it's the right 
way that we should, uh, should act. And so it might shock you, but for every single one of us in this room today uh, and, and online is that we all have a mental illness. It's called sin. So for all of us, we have a mental um, uh, uh, way of thinking that we are drawn to things that we don't want to do. Or we're drawn to things that are not good for us. And so we end up believing things that we shouldn't, uh, shouldn't believe or we shouldn't be acting on. So everybody has a broken mind. We live in a broken world and sin has broken it. So no one has a perfect mind. No one thinks right all of the time, 100% of the time. And so we need to understand that. You don't do that. Your parents don't think right 100%. Our kids, we know our kids don't think right all the time. So it's important for us to realize that, that we need to grow in this area if we are going to be spiritually healthy, spiritually in shape for what God has planned uh, for us. And so we need to realize that that is so important for us. You see, when God gives us an idea, we call that inspiration. When Satan gives us an idea, we call that temptation. And when you get an idea, we just call that Stupid. <laughs> I call it dumb. You've got an idea. But the truth is, Satan doesn't have to give us often false information and false ideas. Because we're able to come up with them all on our own. We can, we can come up with stupid stuff all on our own. We don't need anybody else. But we are surrounded uh, all the time by messages bombarding us in so many ways that are trying to convince us of things that are not true, that are, that are putting things into us uh, all the time. So, for example, TV. When you look at the commercials, they're trying to tell you that if you have that, your life will be better. If you just drive that car, if you have the latest electric car, you, will, you would be, uh, you know, your life would be sorted. And so if you just had a little bit more money and you invested in this, then you would be, uh, you would be better, uh, better off for it. And so, it, you know, it, the, all these things have been bombarded. If you looked better, if you drove this car, if you had all these clothes, whatever it might be, then uh, we think we might be more happier, more secure, and more loved uh, by these things. And so we have got to root out some of the things in our thinking that are not right. We've got to take our mind and exercise it in, a, in the right way. We've got to do some uh, things spiritually, mentally, that will help us to be spiritually wrong. You see, Jeremiah 17 and verse 9 says this, The heart is deceitful above all things and beyond cure. Who can understand it? In other words, I can't always figure out my motives for doing things, and so I certainly can't work out the motives that you have for doing things. We don't fully understand these things. You see, deceitful is a, is a powerful word. In other words, when you are deceived, you don't re realize you're deceived. Because if you knew you were deceived, you wouldn't be deceived. So it's kind of, you, did, you wouldn't know that you don't know. And so it's important for us. And so the heart is deceptful. In other words, our heart tells us something uh, that is true that's not true. It kind of convinces us of things. And so it's amazing how we have this ability all the time to, uh, to, to tell ourselves that things are okay when they're not okay. And so we've got to realize that, that um, you and I cannot be trusted to, to tell ourselves the truth all of the time. So just because we have an idea doesn't mean that it is true. We have to test our ideas. We have to learn that there's blind spots to us that we all have 
that when we look at things like I mentioned last week at, uh, um, about an accident, we can look at something in life and we think what we have seen is the full picture, but so often we've only seen part of the picture or half of the picture. Same with when you listen to someone talking to you about an argument, you listen to one side of the argument and you think, yeah, 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 and then you listen to the other side of the argument and go, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So it's that being able to see uh, and realize that none of us have that perception to see all of things at the same time. Our background uh, biases the things that we look at and how we look at, uh, uh, look at things. And so we don't always see things as they are. And that is often literally with the eye, that the eye you can't always, even though you would think that it's got, it's got the quickest connection to the brain, and yet, it's still been interpreted what you see. The colours are being interpreted. The movement's been interpreted. And we have lots of filters about the things that we see. And so it's easy for us to jump to conclusions. And so that's why the Bible in 2 Corinthians 13 says, examine yourselves to see whether you're in the faith. Test yourselves. Yes, so you're going to have to test your thoughts. Think about your thoughts. Is that thought a right thought? Because if, if, if you keep just playing the old uh, tapes in your mind, you're just going to come up with the same faulty information. The second thing that you've got to do, uh, that the Bible teaches us to do, to have a healthy mind, is to have a helmet on your head. In other words, we need to guard our mind against rubbish coming in, against uh, garbage coming into our, into our mind. I remember in the early days of computers, there was a, a phrase that was used often. It was garbage in, garbage out. In other words, whatever data you put in was all the things that it can do. So if you put faulty data into a computer, it will only ever spill out uh, faulty uh, data. And it's the same with our mind. You put junk into your mind, you're just going to get junk out of your mind. And so we need to be more discriminating about the things that we let into our mind. We need to realize that some of the things that we're allowing into our mind is polluting our mind, is changing our mind, is affecting us, and it affects every area of our life because of what we're allowing to go into it. And so it determines our stress level, it determines our success, Success. It determines our stability in life, the things that we allow into our life. Proverbs 15 and verse 14 says this in the New Living Translation. It says, a wise person is hungry for truth, while the fool feeds on trash. Yes, a wise person is hungry for truth, while the fool feeds on trash. And so... We know that in, in the, for our bodies, that the things that we feed our bodies, the new, whether it's nutritional or not, uh, just makes, makes a big difference. And there are three types of food physically. There's brain food that feeds your brain. There's junk food that just kind of stuffs you off. And then there is toxic food. There's poison. And it's the same for your mind. Uh, and uh, the spiritual will affect you, will affect you on your health, is there is some... Uh, stuff that you'll put into your mind that is good for it. It feeds your mind. It feeds your, your life. Uh, it's good for you. There's other stuff that's kind of just stuffing. It's fluff. It's kind of like the McDonald's of, 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 the, of the food world, as it were. And then there's... Um, and then there's uh, uh, toxic food, there's poisonous, there's stuff that you can do, poisonous stuff, it can be pornography, it can be stuff that's kind of uh, not, not going to do your, your brain any good, it's not going to, uh, to build uh, you up, it's stuff like occultic literature and things like that, you can put ungodly things into your mind and it ends up in your, uh, in your system and so it's important for us that we learn to, to, uh, to put good food in. It's a little bit like sometimes we fill up with junk food on, uh, mentally. And uh, so it's a little bit like, for example, if you're going to go out for a meal at night time and uh, you're going to go to a lovely restaurant, but through the day or just by before you go out, you went out and had a load of junk food before you went to the restaurant. When you go to the restaurant, you could look at that food and think, this is absolutely gorgeous, but you're full. And that's the same mentally. So often we end up filling up with junk food 
so that we're actually, when it comes to good stuff, brain feeding stuff, stuff that will do us good, we end up feeling tired, we feel full, and we're not wanting it to, to, to be into our life. And so it's important for us. Psalm 100 and verse, Psalm 101 verse 3. It says this, uh, David says, I will not set before my eyes anything that is worthless. That is a powerful thing. That's probably something that, that uh, we need to maybe put on our TV or put around different things on our computers or whatever it is to put other things. I will not set before my eyes anything that is uh, worthless. It's a good question to ask yourself. Do you set things before your eyes? Do you watch things? that actually are, uh, are worthless. They're not actually going to be added to it. You see, what you feed grows and what you starve dies. So ask yourself, what are you feeding on? What are you feeding your brain on? And so it's important for us to guard our mind because it is bombarded every single day. And so as I said last week, there are two ways uh, for us to deal with our spiritual life and the one is to have prayer and the other is to have focus and so we need to be through our day we need to uh, pray conversational prayer with God you don't have to close your eyes you can pray while you're driving you can pray while you're at the, the red light or whatever you can pray through your day pray while you're shopping and just keep that going and focus on good things through the day. Philippians 4 says this, don't worry about anything. But instead it says, pray about everything. Too often we worry about things, but if we come and we pray about it, then it will change the way we see things. It says, tell God what you need and thank him for all he has done. If you do this, you will experience God's peace which is far more wonderful than the human mind can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. It will guard your minds and hearts from garbage, from rubbish, from poisonous stuff. So it's so important. So fix your thoughts on what is true and what is noble, what is right, what is pure, what is lovely what is admirable. If anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think on such things. This is so important that we need to pray and fix our eyes on these things. What you focus on is what persists in your life. It's so often that we have things in our mind, we keep trying to think, don't think about this, don't think about that. But actually, the more you say don't think about it, the more you're actually thinking about it. And so what you've got to do is you've got to change the channel, as it were, and you've got to, uh, got to think about something else and choose to think about something else. So it's a little bit like the game where you say to the children and say, whatever you do, do not think about the white rabbit in the garden. And so they go around the garden and they, they're trying not to think about a white rabbit. And what do they do? All they think about is a white rabbit or a pink elephant or whatever it might be that you've got. So they, they don't resist, but replace whatever it is with something else and ideally replace it with something that would be wholesome. And so it's the same on TV. Uh, sometimes on TV, so after you're watching something and you, think, you, know, you end up thinking to yourself, I, I, I don't really want to watch this. This is not going to be good for me. But all we have to do is to change the channel. And the moment we change the channel, our thoughts are back onto something else. And so that's what it's like. We've got to do with our lives. We've got to learn to change the channel, not just on the TV, but in the things that we think about. And so we need to learn to talk to the Lord all the time. Through, you learn to talk to God, it's going to feed your mind. It's going to just put good things in your mind and uh, just learn to change the t channel and what you're going to focus on. Thirdly, is what God wants us to do is to imagine great thoughts. In other words, we need to let God stretch our imagination. And uh, as we heard last week about the, the children uh, that were looking at the, um, the come back from rock nations and they were on about visions and dreams and the things that God had given them. Uh, guess what God wants for every single one of us? It's not just for the youth. It's for them, but it's for all of us. Um, it's that God would give us um, a dream. He'd give us visions that we'd have some goals to go for, that we have things uh, that we want to live for. What is it that you want to see God do in your life over the next uh, year or five years or whatever it might be? Let 
Let God expand your imagination. You see, in Acts 2.17, which was read last week, uh, it says, In the last days I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and your daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions, and your old men will dream dreams. We need to be a people that are seeing what God wants us to see with visions and dreams. So let God expand your vision. Yes, and, 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 and point your life in, a, in the right direction. Get your mind focused onto those kind of things. Imagination is so important uh, for us. Einstein said that imagination is more important than knowledge because knowledge is limited, but imagination goes on. Or Na- Napoleon said, imagination rules the world. Uh, And so it's important for us to realize that imagination, not knowledge, is a sign of intelligence. And when we use our imagination, we are being creative. God wants us to be creative. God is creative. God comes up with new things. And because he is creative, we should be creative as well. And we see that so many times through life. We see that, uh, that God has given so many Christians the dreams and visions. We wouldn't have the Narnia Chronicles of Narnia if we didn't have C.S. Lewis and his imagination. We wouldn't have uh, many the Lord of the Rings and that series if it wasn't for J.R. Tolkien, uh, a Christian writer. And we could go on through these. God created us to be creative, to have an imagination. And so my um, prayer and uh, plea to you today is be creative. You you know, think about what God would have you to do in your life. Allow God to fill your imagination with some of the things. This church needs dreamers uh, so that we actually get dreams for the children's work, dream for the youth work, dream for our connect groups. What's your dream for for the future? And just ask what God is going to do for that. Don't live out of what your past is. Look to the future and think about that. Fourthly, we need to nourish a godly mind. We need to renew a mind daily with God's word. You know, God's word has the power to renew our mind, to refresh our mind, to to wash our mind uh, through. You know, our mind gets tired. And it's, uh, it's, you know, sometimes we don't realize this, but our mind can get tired and it runs out of energy. And so it needs to be renewed. And the way you renew your mind is with the word of God. You refresh your mind with the word of God. Our mind needs to be transformed and it needs to be transformed by that which only God's word can truly transform our lives and it will change everything in us. You see, change in your life starts with your mind. And as you change that, uh, what goes into your mind, it will change the way you act. It will change the things that you pursue. It will change where you go. It will change how you talk in every way. Romans 12 verse 2 says, Do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world. In other words, don't go after the materialist things and the secular stuff that the world goes after. All the, they were the bright lights and the entertainment and the, and the pursuits of this world. Go after God's, world, uh, God's word. Because he says there in tw- verse 2, he continues, he says, be, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you'll be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good and pleasing will uh, uh, for your life. That's how you know. Get into the word of God. That's how you will get to know. That's how you'll be transformed. That's how you'll get to know what God wants you to do. And your, your mind will just be different from being refreshed with the word of God. Now, you may say to me, I'm not a big reader, Jonathan. I don't kind of, I, I, I'm a more of a listener. Well, I want to say to you, thankfully, we live in a day and age when listening is as easy as reading. Yes, so you can get on the U version. We're always going on about U version. It's absolutely brilliant. You can press the little button on that and it will speak it to you. So, for example, in the daily devotions, uh, you can have your daily devotions and it will speak it to you, uh, speak the scriptures to you, and uh, and. And it's just fantastic. So take a hold of that. Um, You know, some people are more readers. Some people are more listeners. Well, whichever you are, just get the word of God into your life and use... Uh, use that as much as you can. You know, if you're traveling in the car and hopefully you, you, maybe you've got a, a dab radio, you can listen to UCB or Premier Radio, or something like that. Fill your mind with stuff that is, uh, is wholesome. 
stuff that's not just fluff, not just stuffing, as it were, um, but or not just junk food. Uh, some of them things, there's nothing wrong with them. They're, they're, not, they're not bad stuff, you know, whether that's sports or hobbies or, uh, you know, it could be any kind of things that can be, but the, the brain food that we need is the word of God into our lives. And so more than anything else, we need, we need that. And uh, finally, we need to keep on learning. We need to keep on learning. We need to make it a lifetime habit to keep on pursuing the growth of our mind and the input into our mind. Uh, it's so important. The actual word disciple, when we talk about being a disciple, quite simply means being a learner. So a disciple of Jesus is a learner of Jesus. We need to keep learning. We need to keep, you know, that what it means to follow Jesus means to keep learning from Jesus and learning what he has. In fact, Jesus said in Matthew 11, he says there, come to me, all you who are tired, stressed out, weary, and he says, learn of me, learn from me. That's powerful, isn't it? Yes, we can learn from Jesus. That's what it means to be a disciple, is to learn from Jesus. It's worth it. Keep on growing, keep on developing, keep on expanding, keep on being stretched mentally as you do. Unfortunately, some people think when they get out of school, that's my education done, I don't need to read another thing. Some people go to university and think, right, that's my education over, I don't need to do anything else. I want to say to you, God wants us to be lifelong learners, learning in every aspect of life, developing ourselves, stretching ourselves, and you can learn from anybody, even people that you disagree with, people that, that maybe don't come from the same part of you. If you're open, you can learn from, from them. Jesus loved to ask questions. In fact, sometimes Jesus answered a question with a question. That's the power of a question, is, is understanding that. He was always asking questions, was Jesus. And, um, and so it's important for us that we have things in us, a reservoir within us from which we can draw out um, uh, things to help others. And you'll find each person that you meet has got a reservoir of knowledge and of experience, and we can learn from it. Just learn to, to ask the right questions. Stay humble. Stay in a posture of learning in every aspect of your life. Proverbs 10 and verse 14 says this, wise men store up knowledge. Wise men store up knowledge. You see, your life is largely influenced. It's determined to a big extent by the things that you read and the people that you associate with. It's both, uh, both the things that, that you read or you listen to and it's the people that you associate with. That's why it's so important to be part of a connect group. That's why relationships are so important because there are some things you learn uh, with other people and from other people that you can never learn on your own. So it's, it's key that we learn from each other. And if you're in a connect group, plug in and you'll learn things and, and you'll be able to, people will learn from you. It's a two-way thing that we can grow together and be intentional about these things. It's important that. Why not start collecting books, get onto, um, you know, uh, Kindle or something like that, or get a library, get a family library, get things away so that you can pass on knowledge and just help each other to succeed. It's important that we store up knowledge, not just for ourselves, but for our children and, uh, and, and for others to be able to, uh, to go from that. There are some good, solid Christian books that, uh, that really would be uh, important to you. Proverbs 19 and verse 8 says this, those who get wisdom do themselves a favor, and those who love learning will succeed. Let me ask you a question this morning. Do you want to succeed? Well, I don't know about you, but the, alter <laughs> the alternative, I don't want. <laughs> I don't want to be a failure. So we all, every one of us, want to succeed. We want to be a success. And so... If we want to be a success, we need to get wisdom. We need to do ourselves a favor and get wisdom. And we can learn through people and we can learn 
through books. We can learn through the, you know, on the internet, whatever. Just you've got to, again, guard your mind, get the right things into your mind so that you can do that. And so I want us now, we're just going to go into our small groups. And I'm going to hand it over to Faith to go into our small groups. But hopefully you've noticed maybe that as we've gone through this, that I've used an acrostic think uh, as we go through that. So the T was for test every thought. H was have a helmet for your head to guard your thoughts. And, uh, and I is for imagine great thoughts. N is for nourish a godly mind. And K is for keep on learning. That was one to do. Let's just discuss together. And uh, as we understand that God really wants us to develop. If you want to be healthy spiritually, and it's time, I believe, for us all to be healthy spiritually, we need to nourish our mind on the things of God. Amen. Fabulous. Wasn't that absolutely awesome? I love the acrostic thing. Really helpful for us just to remember that throughout the week. Well, we know we haven't got connect groups and this isn't a replacement for connect groups, but a little supplement that we do over the summer. So in the room, we have tables out online. You've got the live chat. We're just going to spend 10 minutes talking over the sermon together. So we've got some questions that come up behind me, five in total. But you know what? Let this be a help and a guide for you, okay? Not to restrict your conversations, but to help you apply the word. As we heard in uh, Philippians chapter four, where it says, whatever you think about, think of lovely, noble things and whatever you learn, put it into practice. There is no point us gaining all this knowledge and then leaving it in our mind, okay? We want to let it be uh, produced out in the works that we do. So we're going to just talk it over and kickstart that conversation with ourselves so that we can just pursue the rest of the week in these good thoughts and good ways. So the first question is, are you more of a reader or a listener? Self-awareness is an amazing thing, knowing what type of learner you are. It's been awesome over the homeschooling season to see kids being able to understand their own learning techniques and parents understanding it for themselves as well. So what kind of learner are you, a reader or a listener? And then you can apply that into your life. Second question is, what have you learned today that you aim to implement in the future to begin in, to be getting better shape. Long question to say what you're going to implement from what you've heard. The third question is, dun, dun, dun. what is your favorite junk food and what do you like to feed your mind on? Okay, this is not kind of a time where we're going to be like pointing at the finger. This is just being honest. Self-awareness. What do we actually fill our like ourselves with? So you've got some of the sports, hobbies, social media, TV, Why don't you acknowledge what is that junk food in your life? Question four, what could you swap that could help and nourish your mind rather than just filling it with junk food or fluff? So think about what is that thing that you could exchange in that process? And the question five, how do you feel you can better protect your mind from the toxic stuff? Okay, so see how you get through those questions. You've probably got about two minutes per question. You might want to write some of them down and you can kind of take them along with you but let's just start the conversation now is that good if you're on a table by yourself in the room please why don't you just collaborate and join make sure no one is by themselves online I know the chat's going to go wild so have fun for 10 minutes 